To bag or not to bag? That is a question. Hi, I'm Gary Lovisi, and we're going to talk about something a little different this time. Uh, we're going to talk about putting uh, our paperback collectibles in uh, paperback bags. Um, there's some uh, uh, some uh, different thoughts about like whether you should put the books in a bag or not. And there's different reasons for that, and we're going to take a look at some of that now. Um, first of all, uh, a lot of times people, first of all, I, I do put my books in bags. I think it protects them, and uh, that's why a lot of people do it. But um, it depends on where also, if you're a book collector, how many books you have, where you have the books. If you have them stored in a garage or um, uh, an outbuilding or something like that, um, that could be a that could be a problem because of mustiness and uh, mildew and uh, certain things like that humidity. Also, uh, if you're in um, if you're in the uh, southern part of the country and you're a book collector, you'll know that uh, there's a lot of humidity and that sometimes uh, can uh, damage your books. Thing is that um, and and even in the in the uh, part of country that I'm from, uh, New York and the New Jersey area, um, you can have books, uh, paperback books, just, uh, you know, kind of put on the shelf, either uh, piled up or standing up close together in a shelf. And what happens, though, is that over time, and uh, sometimes it's not that long, it could be like a year or so, you have books on a shelf for a year or two, that could be, and the books the humidity gets into the into the paper and the books and in between the books so you have humidity in between the the covers and what happens is sometimes when you um, then when you decide to take these books and look through them you rip them up because they come they come up because of the humidity has stuck them together and uh, damages the front cover and the back cover if the book had been in a bag you would alleviate that problem on the other hand, there's uh, book collectors in the uh, people who live in uh, areas where there's um, uh, very little humidity uh, up in the in, or up, up in the uh, cold, cool areas of the country. Um, people like to have their books laying out and, and tight together, and uh, they don't want to have them um, in bags. They'd rather not have them in bags. And the thing is, it is healthier for books to breathe kind of uh, to have them open and to have the air get to them. So if you're, if the air that's getting to them is not humid, um, then, then uh, not having them in bags could be uh, probably the best way to go. Uh, certain areas of the country in the, in the north um, area, that's where you hear about certain things like the uh, Mile High comic book collection, where um, uh, uh, paper collectibles, comics or paperbacks or whatever, were uh, in Colorado, and there's a, there was a case also in Maine of a of a collector a collection that was a very um, very very well cared for vintage collection books that were 50, 60, 70 years old that were like new with white pages, brand new, because of the uh, the environment. And the environment is uh, what takes uh, its toll on books, along with reading and other things. Um, if you're in uh, if you're in Florida or uh, uh, other areas where there's a, a lot of humidity, uh, that can be a, a bad area for books. And obviously, in that case, you, you, if you do have the books in bags or not, uh, a, hum a dehumidifier in the room where your books are is probably a uh, best bet. But anyway, I, I, um, I use uh, bags. I, um, I think they're good to use. They protect the books. And uh, there's different kinds of bags. Uh, and uh, we're just going to go a little bit, look at some of that now. Um, I usually get my bags from Bags Unlimited, which is, uh, they come in 100 paperback bags. And uh, we're going to have information for them listed in the description below. You may want to contact them, but you could, there's other, uh, other outfits that sell these bags also. These are for, especially for paperback books. Uh, there's 100 in a pack. Uh, they're 1.5 mil thick is one of them and the thing is that um, 
And this is another paperback bag. It looks kind of old, but it's not that old. Actually, what it is, is these are two different kinds of bags. The, um, the shiny, clear one is, uh, is polypropylene. And these are the, um, they're very kind of, uh, you know, they make a, make, make a sound because they're um, kind of crispy and they make the books look really nice. The, poly, the other one here is the, this plastic is polyethylene, which is a kind of a cloudy plastic and they both work fine. Uh, these are usually a little more expensive. These are a little more cheaper. Um, these make the books look better. These tend to get yellow after a while. Um, but it's up to you what you want to use or not use at all. I'm going to try and just to show you the book in. This is a Christopher Anvil, the science fiction book in a polypropylene bag. And now I'm going to show you the same book in the polyethylene bag. And you can see, it looks fine, but it's a little, a little duller, a little, uh, the, the plastic kind of tends to get a little yellow. So that's, that's that. If you want to put it in the, again, putting it in the polyethylene bag, I mean the polypropylene bag, take the back. Yeah, that looks a lot sharper. Now, is also, you don't have to get bags from Bags Unlimited. You can get bags from uh, a lot of different places. There's um, uh, convenience, uh, not convenience stores, but um, discount stores that sell uh, packages of bags. And here's a, this is just a package, self-stick bags. And these are also fine for paperbacks. These are, I think, one mil. They're, they're a lot thinner, a lot cheaper, but they're fine. They're polypropylene, and they have, uh, like comic book bags, they have a, uh, a uh, adhesive strip on the, on the top. So you could put this in here, and it looks fine, and then, and then take off the, it's easier said than done, take off the poly, uh, the strip for the adhesive and try to get it off your hands and then close the bag and that looks fine um so there's different ways to uh to different kind of bags you can use also there's comic book bags which is what i use and uh these are regular comic book bags that uh yeah you put in a comic book i have backer board here but uh this is a uh, current size bags and um again they have different size all different size bags magazine size bags these are two mil you can put hardcover books in these you can put uh and i do i do uh i do uh bag hardcover books also to put for, for, to protect them but I also broad art them or put on a, uh, a um, uh, vinyl covering uh, for, uh, for protection. And I'll show you that in a minute. But I just want to show you the bags. So you have, uh, you can use different kind of, kind of bags. These are regular comic book bags for current size comics. They're like uh, 100 in a bag, usually like $7 or so, $6, $7. Eight dollars, maybe, and again, they're polypropylene. Now, what I do is different from a lot of other collectors. I cut a lot of the the, the, the books that I really like and that I want to keep uh, well uh, well protected. I cut the bags, form fit them to the book, and um, I'm going to show you what I do here. I, so I put the, the book in the bag. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in two places. I'm going to cut a small area here and then another area here and here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be making 
a cut where I can fold it and where I can form fit it and then I can have a, the uh, top come down where I can tape it closed. Now you could just fold it if you want to do it like that and just fold it like this but it kind of gets a little um, a little kind of uh, it just doesn't come out. Bulky. What? Bulky. Bulky. It's just not. If you're going to go through all of this, why why do it? Why do that? So the thing is, why I the reason why I do do the books this way is because I put them in book racks. I put them on shelves, and when they're form fitted to the book, uh, they fit right into the shelf, or they fit right into the book rack, uh, the spinner rack, or whatever it is wherever I put them. They fit right in rather than having the these these bags which don't fit sometimes because what happens is you got to kind of if you're gonna if you have a rack you got to kind of force them in and then what happens is you're kind of pressing against the, the book you're getting a, you can get damage on the book that way you can get damage on the book this way too so you have to be careful so I'm going to show you how I cut it this is just my own personal thing I just give it a cut like this here. Just take a little bit off of that so you can fold it. And then you just hold it and cut it so that there's a flap here, here, and then here down to the, let's see if I had a better cutting scissor, down to the corner of the book, not touching the corner of the book, but just right to it. And take that off. So let's get rid of all of that plastic. So now you have, this is basically what you have. I don't know if you can see it. A little bit of a cut here, and then a cut here and here for the flap. And then I just tape it. So I, I, I put it, you know, kind of uh, put it flush into the bag, make a kind of a, a kind of a little pressure there to, to make the fold. And then I tape it. I usually put one piece of tape in the middle and one piece of tape at each end. And you know, this is like kind of crazy, I know, but um, it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of nice. It looks it makes the books look really nice. And um, it's kind of fun to do. It's kind of therapeutic, and. Uh, because we're all a little obsessive compulsive anyway. But the thing is, is now look at how this one looks. It's beautiful. And the thing is that when you do a book like this, the bag now uh, is form fit to the book, but it also protects the book. And it not only protects the book, but it gives it a little bit of rigidity and a little bit of uh, further strength when you have a book in a bag like this, you've got all this open area and it's kind of moving around in there or could, you know, and it depends on how you, you know, when you do it this way, you know, it, uh, it just comes out better. There is one drawback to this, but um, is that you do have, because of the cuts, you have an open, a tiny open area on the, on the, uh, on the bottom here. So that, that's, you get all the air out of the book so that it's flat and it's firm and it, uh, it's protected and it's, and it's uh, stronger. So that's what I do with um, a lot of the paperbacks that I have that I collect, but I don't bag everything this way because it'd be impossible. But uh, I do bag quite a few of them that way. And I like them, these are the ones that go right into the, I have a spinner rack and they go right into the rack, they fit perfect when you put a book with a bag like this into a spinner rack. This is again a 1.5 mil bag, but there are also 2 mil bags and 3 mil bags. Some of them are so um, so rigid, they're, they're hard to fit into the, into the rack and, uh, and onto the shelves. And um, they, it, it becomes very cumbersome doing it that way, using them that way. But that's up to you know everybody what they want to do. So that's um, that's.
that's it on the bags that I that I use. It's up to everybody's um, opinion on what they want to what they want to use for uh, to bit to bag their books or not. I would suggest that you do bag them. It's probably the safest thing is to use uh, uh, one and a half uh, mil or two mil polypropylene bag. Uh, the books will look great. Uh, the bags won't get yellow in, with time, uh, unless I guess maybe you're a smoker. If there's a smoker in the house, that's a different story. But um, those those kind of keep their keep their appearance, and they look and they look they look great. Um, the other thing is we're going to look at some hardcover, a couple of hardcover books. And um, just to give you an idea on these. So you can you can bag a hardcover book. I mean, I use the uh, could use the uh, magazine size bags or different size bags to to put the uh, book in, in one of these bags. You can uh, fold it to fit the book. You can even cut it, cut this bag the same way as I cut the, paper, the bag for the paperback with the flap on the top for the book. And see, that's another thing I wanted to say about the interesting thing is that also the way that I, I do these is now you have a flap on the top so that the book, you want to take the book out, comes right out. Just have to be careful. There's tape over here, so you do have to be very careful. So you take it out, and you can get you can access the book. Then when you want to put it back in, it's kind of a natural holder. Put it back in, fold the, the flap down, uh, hold it, and voila. So that's just what I wanted to say. So you could do that with hardcover books also. Um, but also, there's um, what I use mostly is um, is the plastic uh, covering, and um, there's different types. You can use a Brodart, which is what I use. Brodart is like these. It's a kind of a library, um, kind of a library um, covering book cover. And uh, they make these, they're, uh, they, they fit, they make them in different sizes to fit all kinds of uh, hardcover books. And I um, just want to show you, you could also have, uh, and what a lot of, a lot of uh, booksellers do is they use just a, a piece of mylar, like, like this. Is the is the book cover? Is the dust jacket? They'll cover the dust jacket, and uh, that works fine. Um, again, this is polypropylene plastic. Uh, it's very clear, very shiny. Makes the book look really shiny and nice. Um, sometimes this can, it can age and it can uh, get a little uh, dull, but um, uh, you know then you can replace them. Um, I've bought books where I've redone the uh, re redone the jackets, just because uh, sometimes the book's been around in 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 plastic dust jackets for you know 10, 15, 20 years. So you can do that. What I do is I do I put it in a Brodart like this. So this book I'm gonna I was gonna Time of Terror by Seth Hunter, hardcover, historical novel, historical action adventure novel. And um, let's put that in the, in the broad art, give you an idea how this works. So what I do is I kind of just flatten out the, de the dust jacket, the folds. Don't want to get rid of the folds because you're going to use them, but you just want to kind of uh, get them so that you can manage them into the uh, into the row dot, and what you do is just lift this up, put the jacket in, and uh, get it to the end. Position it the way you want to do it, where you want it to go, and uh, it's a little bit of a 
sometimes a trick to this because you gotta you know, be careful, especially with the older books, older dust jackets. And when you're on a table, depending on what the surface is, this um, this vi uh, plastic tends to sometimes stick to the table. So you have to want to make sure that you get everything in properly. And uh, I think I got it in there good now. So then you just roll this up to the end of the bottom of the jacket, and then just with your nail, just get it up so that you can see the bottom of the dress jacket here. And then I just, what I always do is just double check to make sure that it's push it up a little bit very carefully just to make sure it's all flush over here so everything's fine. Now, just take the excess of the bottom of the jacket, pull it up, take my nail, run it across the bottom, everything nice and flat, take off the three adhesive adhesive coverings, take those off, make sure that everything is flush and flat, take off the last one, and there it is. And now, you put the book in, the fold will guide you, get it to the spine, the fold on the back will guide you, and voila. Now what I do is I just push these down to make sure that they're all fitting fine. I'll take this do a little bit of pressure on the, on the edges of the jacket to make sure that it folds and fits. Same thing with the back. This is a new book, so it works fine, but it'll, uh, it will work fine with an old book too, with an old dust jacket. Get the air out of there. And here you have nice Hard cover with the Brodart jacket. Here's the other one with the just the vinyl, as it were. Here. Either way, it's a good way to um, to uh, protect your books, protect the dust jackets, and um, also you can put these in a bag and make a bag uh, form fitted bag for these, the way I did on the uh, Avon book, The Big Fight big fights. So um, kind of gives you an idea of just uh, what's available as far as uh, bags are concerned and uh, different kind of bags, what to use. Um, it's up to each collector uh, what they want to do, how they want to do it. Um, I think uh, it's nice to, um, to actually to go through the books and to, uh, to bag them. Uh, or to put a, to put a, a protect the dust jackets on them. Um, it's kind of a interesting, fun uh, a way to uh, to uh, to do the books and to make sure that they're protected. So I just wanted to uh, share this and see if you what you think. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and a like. Uh, share, and uh, see you next time. Thank you.